to stop reading like this. <laughs> Hi. Mr. President, this is Bill Pierce. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John Hall. Paul. Peggy Sewell. Good to see you. Good to see you. I think the Lord. Father George Clements. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir Edgar Naylor. Good to meet you. Good to see you. And Congressman Tom Wiley. Hi. Hi. How are you? Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. And Mary Gall, who is chairman of the This says so much. This is just beautiful. Well, Joe was going to bring you five more. Would you like some more, Joe? <laughs> they said no gifts. No <laughs> we had a silly group of five. I'll send you. <laughs> well, I remember once when I was governor, uh, about every other week, the State Department of Education had arranged that they would bring a class in from some high school in the state. I mean, that's for kids that hadn't gotten their hands up in time or anything for a question. And one day, I'll never forget, in that post period, the whole subject had been taken up in the matter of abortion. And that nice young lady had raised this thing about what happened to the children, you know, if they weren't wanted and so forth. And I sat at about the millions of people that were looking, waiting for a child for adoption and so forth. And all of a sudden, a little nice looking girl kind of raised her hand like this tentatively. She had to ask a question, and I said, well, you didn't ask a question. And we weren't on the air. It wasn't on the table. It was so wonderful. She capped it all. She said, I am adopted. She said, I love my parents, and I think they love me. She said, I'm glad no one killed me. Thanks a lot. She had asked her while, while we were doing <laughs> This is just, this is marvelous. And all the children, it's just, you're really hot. He's my congressman. <laughs> 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 Sheila Brady. 
Thank you for seeing us. And Steve Norris. Hello. Hello. Just fine. Well, right. we, uh, Chair, we're going to put you right beside the president. Okay? I'll go around and be by Steve. There. Mr. President, this is a better story than you know. Because this young man was rescued from a classroom where he was considered to be not capable of dealing with work. He received his services from a private sector rehabilitation agency, which earned its own money, goodwill. Yes. He's going to work, and he works for an A76 contractor, <laughs> <laughs> which is part of your administration's <laughs> goal. So we've got it all at once. Well, I have to say, Victoria, I think you were, your courage and what you've done has been an inspiration to all of us. And the goodwill that I know about you yes. work. <laughs> I have some old radio tapes of yours. <laughs> when, when you retire, I have some new ones. Thank you, Mr. Dillon, for Thank you. This is just a little souvenir of your visit here. Thank you. Well, thank you. Oh, well, listen. Thank you. All that you can. Thank you for all you're doing. All of you. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for saying this. Thank you for being our president. <laughs> so well. Uh, very accurate statement. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> That's nice. We do appreciate all the help the administration has given us. I, we, we've doubled our, our size and our productivity in the last five years, and the economy has helped us do that. And it's, we helped 86,000 people like Tori this year, and that's what the real payoff is. Yeah. Wow. In fact, he was in Social Security before he wow. got a job. Yeah. He's only 20 years old. He's had three promotions. He has a car, a girlfriend. <laughs> what could you want in life? <laughs> he's also he's not an order order <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. inspiration to a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 See you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Roger Putnam. Yes. Hello, President. Mr. Good Charles Jackson. Hi, Mr. President. Nice to see you. Mr. Richard Johnson. Mr. President. Hello, Mr. Evans. Of course, Congressman Montgomery. Congressman Glad to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you, sir. And Congressman Tolman. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Nice to see you. You had a great dinner last evening. That was. Well, we, we're going to try to get a group uh, picture uh, here, guys. Right. Right. Too far. I don't think there's a difference. Yeah, let's get a little closer. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah.
to say you need more and uh, they help. <laughs> <laughs> Kirkland with me here. Well, we're going to do yes. some, uh, yeah. How do you do, Mr. President? Good to see you. Good to see you. I think we're going to go. Charles Smith. Hello. President. Jim Burge. Nice to see you. We made cats. Hello. Joe Cox, Mr. President. President. Good to see you. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, I think we do some business first and then all of you join us. was the result of strong bipartisan efforts on the part of business, government, and labor. Good for you. <laughs> That's good. There we go. And this is the first time anything of this kind has been signed since 1953. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. Really exciting. That's the first year I went to my meeting. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Lane, I'm going to ask you if you would give this to Irving Brown, who did so much to bring this about. Thank you, Mr. President. He'll appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this represents a great deal of cooperation between government, business, and labor. Yeah, we'll get Convention 87 up here in the day. Well, this is about a third of a century. It means they can go to Geneva in June and talk to the Poles and say, all right, we've signed conventions. You have to. Why don't you buy five? I mean, it's okay. That's really fair. We'll be over there. I think I have to go to Poland as well if things go back down. You might get charmed with holes. It's just me. Thanks. I appreciate doing it. It's great. June, uh, I'm due to go June 10th, and then I'll be uh, well, this first, this yeah. And then I'm going back to Geneva for the ILO meetings, which yeah, I all of us are. I could see that you got there, couldn't I? Yes. That's right. <laughs> I, I was a little terrified. I was thinking the June after this. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm, no I'm on your team. <laughs> I'm with you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Matt. We appreciate all you were doing. Okay. It's good. Back up and on the hill. Well, I'm just the side. Here, these are number 144, and then 147. I wrote my dissertation on how we came to join the It was the only organization to lead that we did join. Frank, you the world part that we. AFL and the CAM and the Chamber of Commerce did it. Well, more than a part of that history. How are you? Just fine. I've got something very special for you now. Well, this would have gotten to you a lot faster if uh, Grover Cleveland, Alexander, and Cub 
<laughs> you know that, right? You had to know that. He had at one time been a cop. That's right. Yes, That's right. before before the uh, the war, World War One. How long then, was he? How long? Was well, he? I don't know, but I know that uh, Wrigley provided a salary to his wife all the time they were in the service. Oh, nice. I didn't on. even know that. I didn't know that. This is this this I recovered from MGM. This you are, and. You can tell it's so much nicer. It's so much <laughs> nicer. I mean, that's got to that's got to look great. Can you well, do that? Let's see how that see how that would look. Can it, I mean, that's it's that's still nice. fit. Still that's fit. <laughs> <laughs> it still fits. Grover Cleveland Alexander. You know, this was a that was a great story that we had. I had never forgave Jack Warner for not letting letting she use the word epilepsy. He was an epileptic. Why? Why wouldn't they let you? Well, we'd done a picture earlier, and in fact, I was in it, H.G. Wells' story, uh -huh. and um, and it wasn't too successful. But he blamed that we shouldn't have used the word. Oh, for crying out loud! But one of the things that Grover Cleveland Alexander, that famous incident when he was picked up in the gutter in Chicago, and accused of being and the dr drunk judge and publicly everything. dressed him down right. for setting such a terrible example, and he would stand there and allow that to be done as the basis that he was drunk, rather than admit that he'd had an oh. epileptic seizure. Is that really true? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know yeah. that. And they wouldn't allow, Warner did not allow the use of the word? No, so we just in the picture, and the truth was that a lot of the sports press that didn't know it, it was one of the best kept secrets in sports. Oh, I didn't know that. And uh, but about the epilepsy, and everybody knew him as a drunkard and so forth. Yeah. And uh, the result was that well, we just kind of referred to it as a kind of a, you know, a nervous thing, a seizure that he would have. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the sports press accused us of trying to whitewash him by pretending that he had this other thing, where if we'd used the word epilepsy, they would have known that it, it had, known. To be, had to be true. Was that, did he carry that all the way? I mean, that was oh, until he, Yes. that was not a known fact until yeah. afterwards. As a matter of fact, the original script was changed around because they were going to begin with a flashback to a body in the morgue. He was picked up in Long Beach, California, and he had died uh -huh. in the street. And uh, he had cancer, and it was cancer of the ear. And uh, we had his, his widow. The first time I ever told Mrs. Wrigley that the part I was playing and what we were making, Mrs. Wrigley said, you do have the romance, don't you? <laughs> because here's that love affair that to he and Amy, his, his oh. wife, uh, was so great. He once, in order to have a weekend with her during the season, he pitched both games of a doubleheader and won both of them so that he could have a day off to take Amy on a little oh. kind of vacation. That's high trip. romance. Yeah. That's high yeah. romance. Oh, he I, was an unbelievable character. I, I came through and I was, you had a lot of folks coming in beforehand and everything. Through and I saw Dottie Dillinger. I hadn't seen her in over a year because uh, from Santa Monica and so on. And uh, I just don't get by that often, even though I've been in the administration since what '82 or something like that. But I wanted you to be sure to get this before, well, because uh, 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 I thought it would be very. This will go in a presidential library. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Well, well, I thank you for giving it up. I. It took a I lot. I didn't want to. I didn't want to oh, give really, it up. But now you're making it feel so sad. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm, I'm more than happy to give it to you. Well, well thank really. you very much. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, I have something for you. Uh, it's actually not for you. It, uh, I tell you. This is for your bride. Oh. And it's just a note from mine. So that's all it is. But okay. make sure, now you make sure you deliver right. that, all right? <laughs> I'll tell you another little episode in this. He was, you know, after he'd gotten a start in the major leagues, then he was hit in the head with a ball, and he ended up with double vision. He saw two of everything. Well, he kept trying and experimenting to see if he couldn't, uh -huh. you know, get, get back, and he did eventually. But at one time, he tried out with a minor league team, Galesburg. Oh, in Galesburg, Galesburg. yes. And uh, he thought, you know, if he closed to one eye, that maybe it it work. Yeah. So the manager got up at the plate of this team and said, well, okay, throw me something. And with the first pitch, he broke three of the manager's ribs. Oh. 
<laughs> and they ran him out of the ballpark. He had a kid from his hometown with him and ran him out of the ballpark. And he said, what happened, Grover? Uh -huh. And he said, I guess I closed the wrong eye. <laughs> <laughs> you were in, let me ask you this just before I leave. You were in, your family was in Monmouth, weren't they, for about a we year, lived, we lived a year and a half? Yep. Yeah. Be, because that's where my father's from. Oh. And before uh, that, we lived in Galesburg. Right, not far away. Right, yeah. 